Okay, in this little screencast, we're going to look at wheels and axles. And this little diagram you see is a person who's using a, a handle or a winch to wind out a bucket of water from a well. So here's our well. Just to complete our picture. So we've got a well there. Okay, and you first let's have, let's have a look at a couple of things about this diagram. Um, you'll notice that the the bucket, the bucket is connected to a rope, and the rope is wound around this uh, cylinder, which we call the axle. So this cylinder here is the axle. There it is. There. And connected to the end of our axle is our handle. Now I'll change colour for this. So this handle here that is actually as the person turns the handle that's going to trace out a circle and we're going to call that the wheel. So because this handle is tracking out a circular path that's behaving like a wheel. So the person's, you know, basically turning his hand in circular in a circular path. Okay, so we've got an axle and a wheel. Now, before we go ahead and look at why this makes the job easier of winding the bucket of water out, we need to go back and look at our levers. So, just to refresh your memory. Remember, if we have a lever and we place a fulcrum in position there and we've got the load here so there's our load and we're applying an effort at this end so there's our load there's our effort and here's our fulcrum the we get mechanical advantage we actually make it easier it becomes easier for us to lift this load um, if this fulcrum is very close to the load and we can really look at this in um, quite easily by looking at two parts of our lever. The arm of our lever is, is broken into two parts. We've got this part here, which we call the load arm. That's the load arm, or the load side of the lever, because that's where the load is. On the other hand, the other side of our lever, this section here, is called the effort arm okay and that's the arm where we're applying our effort and let's say that this distance here the distance there was 10 meters and let us imagine that the side here this length here is 2 meters so the effort arm is actually longer than the load arm we can actually work out how many times easier it will be to lift that load by simply dividing the, the length of the effort arm by the length of the load arm. In other words, the mechanical advantage we get from this lever, which is how many times easier it is to lift the load than it normally would be without the lever, to work out that mechanical advantage, it's in this case, it's the length of the load arm sorry, the effort arm, I beg your pardon divided by the length of the load arm so we've already said that the effort arm, the effort arm here, is 10 meters. So that's going to equal, oops, equal length of the effort arm is 10 meters, and the length of the load arm is 2 meters. So on your calculator, if you went 10 divided by 2, the answer would be 5. So that means our mechanical advantage is 5. And that means, in fact, 
that it will be five times easier to lift that load than it would be if we were trying to lift it without a lever. Five times easier. Another way of looking at it, we can lift it with five times less force. So in this, in this sense, the lever is acting as a force multiplier. By applying a small force here, a small force only, we're actually able to lift a very, very heavy object. Okay? So the idea of mechan mechanical advantage is, um, is the same as acting as a, when the object is acting as a force multiplier. Okay, so let's come back to um, our diagram. So we've got a wheel and we've got an axle. Now this person is also going to get some mechanical advantage. And to work out the mechanical advantage of our wheel pulley system, where we're, we're winching up the bucket of water, we need to look at the size of the wheel, the size of the wheel, and the size of the axle. And there's the axle there. Actually, I'll colour them in different colours so we can see them more clearly. So, um, here's our wheel here. Okay, so we're interested in the size of the wheel, and we're also interested in the size of our axle, which is here. Okay. Now notice that the wheel is much bigger than the axle, and that means we're going to get a mechanical advantage. It's going to be easier to lift that bucket of water out of the well than it would be if we uh, just try to pull it out with our, with our bare hands. Now remember we talked about levers, remember how we worked out the mechanical advantage by looking at the length of the load arm, the uh, effort arm, and dividing it by the length of the load arm. Well, it's for something very similar here. We look at the size of the wheel and divide it by the size of the, radio, of the axle, and that will give us the mechanical advantage of our wheel axle system. So let's just draw um, these wheels and axles in a slightly different way so it's easier to see. So I'm going to draw, there's my wheel, and I'll draw the axle, there it is there in blue. Notice the axle is smaller than the wheel. Now how do we measure the size of the circle? Well we measure the size of the circle using something called the radius, and you might have learned about that in maths. If you draw a line from the centre of a circle out to the edge, that's called the radius. I'll put R for radius. Same way here. That's the radius of the axle. So let's say that our, the radius of our wheel is 2 metres. So let's say that this radius is 2 metres. And let's say that the radius of our axle is 20 centimetres. 20 centimetres. Well, to work out the mechanical advantage of our wheel, the formula is it's the, it's the radius of the wheel divided by the radius of the axle. And the radius of the wheel, let's say in this particular instance, is 2 metres. Now I want that in centimetres so the units are the same. So 2 metres is in fact 200 centimetres. And let's say the radius of the axle we said was 20 centimetres. Now 200 divided by 20 is the same as 20 divided by 2, which is 10 that gives us a mechanical advantage of 10, which means with this arrangement, the, the, um, the effort required to lift this bucket out of the water using this system is going, to make it, is going to make it 10 times easier than if we didn't have this system. We tried to use, it, use our bare hands. So that's how we work out the mechanical advantage of this system. And in that sense, this is also a force multiplier. Um, I can put in, we can put in a small amount of effort 
to get a much bigger effort at the at the bucket. In other words, I only need to put in a small force here to turn the handle to get a big force up here lifting this heavy bucket of water. So it's a force multiplier.